What's good, YouTube? Silver Hyena, back again with a new video. With very old watercolor paints. Seriously, all you need to do is look at the box. To get an idea of how old these things are, yeah, these were something that my mom found in her storage. She doesn't use them anymore. So, we're gonna see if they work. I've got several boxes. Some of the colors are the same, though. And each box holds six tubes and some of them like as you can see still squishy paint is still okay but let me see if I can find one of the ones where it's not really the case ah well okay this one does have masking tape on it so but this one this is hard as a freaking rock. But we're gonna try and make this work. Got empty palette here. Got a paintbrush. We are gonna do some swatching. Just a moment. Okay. So, pulled out a bunch of colors. Some of these are hard as a rock, so I'm wondering if I'm even going to be able to get anything out of them. It's an adventure. Now, can I... Okay. Cap is actually unscrewing. So this one is burnt umber. But can I get? Okay, yeah, that that is not coming out. <laughs> that is. Oh boy. You might be able to hear my mom griping about the football game not going her way. Oh, am I actually going to be able to? No, this, this stuff. A uh, big fat no. So I'm just going to toss that. Okay. I'm going to try one that wasn't hard as a rock. Ooh. that I think that was a seal from oh my hang on I told you guys these were old uh, oh my god Well, this is quickly turning into a disaster. Hang on a moment. Take three. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Something actually came out. Oh, kind of. It's trying. This is the cadmium yellow light. Okay, hang on. Get it into its designated spot.
Okay, yeah, I might have to move the palette. Okay, well, color isn't half bad, all things considered. Considering how ancient these are, older, way older than those Daniel Smiths. However, I still think that the Daniel Smiths are way better. But, okay, I'm going to see how many more of these I can actually open and get the color out, and I'll get back to you. Okay. So by a process of elimination, these are the ones that survived the ages. These were the ones that the, you could take the cap off and you could actually squeeze out some paint. So we've got a grand total of 10 colors here. Oh, and before you guys say anything, I promise you I'm not being cheeky. Look. That's actually what the color is called. I had to do a double take. Now, as you can see from my first swatch of the cadmium yellow, ugh, I've got to be really careful. I'm almost knocking over my water. It seems to have dried pretty nice. So I've got hope that these can be utilized. <sighs> got my palette here even though it just dawned on me that I'm gonna need a lot more mixing space anyways I'm gonna swatch these all out so and after the uh, swatching is done then we're gonna make something what I don't know Alright, so these are the finished swatches of, what, what is the spray of babe again? Oh, it's just Artist's Watercolor Permanent Pigment. Okay then. Uh, like I said earlier, these are really old. The yellow one had dried pretty nice, but I want to give these all a chance to dry, and then I will give you further opinion from there. And I tried out a couple of blends. Um, I really like this blue to green one. That one turned out really well. And the colors mix pretty well, too. So far, anyway. And once we are completely done with the swatches, I figure that I will augment some of my Master's Touch. with these paints just because I haven't used them in a while so yeah I will see you in a bit okay so paint has dried and while the colors aren't awful you can here hang on a second there is a clear difference between these and here is a page of Daniel Smith I mean there is a clear clear difference ah. these feel more similar to the master's touch when dried and the raw sienna there was kind of splotchy but we are gonna see if we can make these 
work. Got my Sad Masters Touch palette to augment any colors and as an extra mixing palette. But we are gonna do a painting. Alright, thank you all for waiting. I had sketched this down off camera while waiting for those paints to dry, utilizing these. I'm curious to see how well the color pencils, the color, they're erasable color pencils, I'm curious to see how they work with watercolor. So we're just combining all sorts of experiments into one video today. It's early September right now at the time of this recording, but I'm really feeling some fall autumn colors. And as you can see, okay, well, I mean, like there's the blue and the green, but there's a lot of autumn e colors. <laughs> is that a word? Well, I guess it is now. And so I really, really, really wanted to use some of those yeah. get things set up so I can get my palettes where I need them okay but yeah I, I am really really excited to try this out so I am gonna get started I'm gonna speed things up but you will hear my thought process in just a second. Stay tuned. Now, the inspiration for this design was actually from the Puyallup Fair. There was a booth featuring a bunch of taxidermy, horns, antlers, and pelts that you were actually allowed to touch slash pet. It was actually a lot of fun and very educational. It's probably the closest I'll ever get to petting an actual wolf or bear. <laughs> Among the various things at this exhibit was an elk's antlers. Elk antlers? Elk's antlers? Okay, um... Okay, I'm not exactly sure how to word that exactly, but there was a set of elk antlers at the exhibit, and boy are those things big. Not as big as the moose antlers, mind you, but I'd also seen some photos of elk visiting my grandma's lately, so here we are. Inspiration. The paint is easy to work with and layers nicely. The colors I was left with lended themselves beautifully to a fall-esque painting. Already, the leaves are changing colors and the air is getting crisper. I'll miss the summer, but I love the colors of autumn. Just not the rain. Trust me, Washington weather means a soggy fall. So, color change in the leaves, yes. Uh, the near constant rainfall, no. I absolutely love how everything turned out. Very spiritual. I've always loved that spiritual style of art. I'm not sure if any of you guys have ever seen an elk up close before, but these things are big and absolutely magnificent. Maybe I didn't realize how much I loved these animals until I painted one. Honestly, I think this is my first time drawing slash painting an elk. Post below, have you ever seen an elk in person? I want to know. Also, let me know if you've found this brand of watercolor before. 
Because I haven't seen it anywhere, although it could be so old that it doesn't exist anymore. Watercolor painting really is a wonderful experience. If you can, I'd suggest getting yourself some and trying them out. There are several budget-friendly sets out there. You don't have to take out a second mortgage in order to create something beautiful. Okay, so here we are, line work, paint. Overall, I actually enjoyed using those uh, random no-name paints that my mom gave me. They're, I equate them to about the master's touch. Hardly Daniel Smith, but they worked. So, hey, I'm happy. I mean, when you get something for free, can you really complain? Okay, maybe just... Maybe just a smidgen when things really aren't quite working out, but... Hey, what can you do? Anyways, that's all the time that we have for today. Go ahead and leave a like on this video. And subscribe to the channel. Post a comment. Have you ever found any really, really old art supplies? If so, have you used them? I want to hear your stories. Anyways, this is Silver Hyena, signing off. Stay creative, everybody. Bye!